Well, there's lots of uh, discussion going on at the moment in South Africa about mandatory vaccines. Adrian Gore, uh, very famously at Discovery, said that they are making vaccinations mandatory for all 10,000 of their staff. Internationally, uh, companies like Goldman Sachs have done the same thing. Delta Airlines is doing something different. If you work for that uh, airline company and you don't get vaccinated, then they're going to charge you $200 a month as a fine. So there, there's a quite a lot of pressure coming from corporates to get employees to get vaccinated. On the other hand, uh, while the deaths from vaccinations have been slight and, and very, very small and very rare, there still have been hundreds, if not thousands of them around the world. So not everybody is terribly excited about being forced to be vaccinated. A, a, a fascinating article was sent out to NIASA members this morning by Gerard, uh, Gerard Papenfuss and his colleague, uh, Jaco Swart, both from NIASA. Jens, why did you decide, maybe Gerard, we can start with you. Why did you decide to, to tackle this very controversial subject? Thank you, uh, Alec. Uh, well, you know, that's the second time we communicate uh, on this issue. Uh, and we've also made our position very clear previously. I think this is uh, very relevant. Uh, we can no longer remain quiet on this. Uh, and uh, I just want to emphasize this debate is not uh, about whether vaccine is a good or a bad thing. Uh, I mean, that's an entirely different debate, and we don't want to go into that debate. We're simply not equipped to do that. For us, it is a, uh, we, we all have our opinions and views. They are two sides of the story. But now, at this stage, it's about uh, the, uh, the exercising of the individual's freedom of choice. And uh, uh, we want to alert those associated with us. And even beyond that, that this is our opinion that that right needs to be respected. Um, so, you know, we had to come out and say this is our position. Um, this is a very divisive issue, and I think if this is not going to be treated properly, then uh, this might tear this country apart, tear businesses apart, uh, and tear the country apart. I mean, we are really divided into two camps on this issue, and this, uh, the, the, the sooner we take this out of the debate, the better. Uh, being anti, uh, you can you can be a pro uh, vaccinator and still uh, respect somebody else who doesn't want to do it, and vice versa. So uh, we think, take this out of the debate, uh, and we advise employers not to engage in this. Uh, do, do not go down this path. But, Jaco, uh, it's, it's a difficult thing not to go down the path, because reading your article, it has already been made uh, obligatory for employers to tell government whether or not they're going to make vaccinations compulsory. That, that uh, I, I had no idea this had occurred until reading the article that uh, you published saying that, in fact, something of this nature was already set out in July. Yeah. Uh, well, the, the director doesn't actually state that you have to tell government that you are going to vaccinate or not. What it says is that you need to make an election um, within 21 days from the 11th of June when it was published. Um, whether you are going to vaccinate or not, and if you are going to vaccinate or not, you need to put that into your, your return to work plan and your phase in plan and your safety plan for the workplace. So you have to, you have to make an election, that's what it says. Um, certain, certain large employers or larger employers to government, that's not a general obligation. The obligation is to make an election whether you will vaccinate or not. So, Herod, what you said, if I read you correctly, is that you would say to the NIASA members who employ hundreds of thousands of people in South Africa, don't even fill in that form or don't send that form back because it's, it's not something that you should be engaging in. Yeah, that's our position. Uh, that, that's, that's our position. There's, there's, uh, you know, there's a certain obligation in terms of the Health and Safety Act uh, but I think we can, an employer can get around that without dismissing, eventually dismissing an employee that refuses uh, to vaccinate. This is what we say. Is there's, you can do that without 
uh, allowing for a person to lose his job. We, 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 you, we cannot expect of, of people to make a, a, a decision here whether to I, a, have a job or get vaccinated. That, that is wrong. This is something that's never happened in the history of the world. I mean, it reminds me uh, almost like the one, uh, one, uh, one child policy of the Chinese and where you were pregnant, you were forced uh, into an abortion. I mean, this is, this is immoral. I mean, we cannot do that. And I mean, there are many questions around that. And if there is uncertainty, well, then just respect it. I mean, the, in the, the, the Bill of Rights might make provision for, for religion, opinion, uh, belief. Now, you know, it, it can fall in any of those categories. And, you know, uh, people hear certain stuff and they have a view on this. And, you know, if, if, we, if we do not stand firm on this issue, we might just find ourselves in future being faced with uh, uh, similar choices, but on different issues. And I think this is a time where we, uh, we need to stand firm, all of us as a country, that we cannot go down the path where we force people to make decisions. To, if you want a job, then make that decision. I say that is not a choice that we need to, must, cannot, must not present an employee with. So what would you say if you were talking to Adrian Gore, who's taken an, a different opinion? Sorry, Eric, I've just uh, missed you for a moment here. Okay, my, my question was if Adrian Gore was sitting apart on the other side of the table from you, and he's taken the view that because of the, uh, the danger to the uh, health system and the danger to employees who are not vaccinated, that they yeah. almost need to have that decision taken for them. Well, you know, then that, that brings us, you know, that, or that drags us almost into the debate or whether the vaccine is a good or a bad thing. Um, I think, and that is my view, that the, the whole thing has been exaggerated. I had COVID myself. Uh, I've been through this. Uh, and somebody would say, well, Gerard, then you don't have a problem. You have uh, sufficient natural immunity. I said, well, uh, you know, that solves my problem, but it doesn't solve others' problems. So I'm involved here. And, and I say, you know, um, there are alternative way, ways to treat you yourself. Um, I've been through it. I was properly treated. I did, was not in hospital. Um, and um, I read a lot about this, this issue. And, you know, there is enough sufficient reason for me to say I'm concerned uh, about what I hear. But, I mean, that's not, uh, that's not a clear-cut issue. And I don't want to get involved in, in, in that. But um, uh, I differ, of course, then <laughs> directly with Adrian Gore on and forcing your employees. Well, I think this is going to tear companies apart. That is going to break down the, uh, the relationship between employees. And, you know, when you lo you've lost that, uh, that spirit in your business, well, you won't get it back. I say respect each person's uh, views, accommodate them, um, that's the best you can do and that's the best for your company and companies that respect that and go down this path will be the companies that uh, will, be, will be victorious at the end uh, this is a, a temporary crisis it's going to go away uh, this is not going to be for um, um, so treat this properly respect other people accommodate people and uh, create a spirit of tolerance in your workplace. This is the best, we, the best way we can deal with it. This is our view. Jaka, what is the legal Sorry, po choice here? Uh, what is the legal position uh, on, on uh, mandatory vaccines? Yeah. Uh, so maybe just, just further to your question on Discovery's decision to, to make it mandatory for all the employees. That is not what the directive envisaged. Um, what it says is that you need to identify those, identify those employees who, by virtue of comorbidities, are at risk for serious illness or death, or employees who, by virtue of the conditions of employment, the workplace uh, is at a high risk of uh, being contaminated by, by the virus. And then, if you cannot accommodate those employees with a range of other options, then you can dismiss them if they refuse to take a, a, a vaccine. 
So it's not a blanket um, permission to, make, to, to force all your employees to be vaccinated. That's not what the directive says. So I think it's dangerous territory to simply issue a blanket statement that we're going to, to um, mandate all our, or, or, or make it compulsory for all our employees to be vaccinated. That's not what's written currently in the directive. Um, you know, and it creates, it creates problems for employers on three fronts, because there's no doubt it infringes fundamental rights in terms of your right to bodily integrity and, and in terms of your right of um, freedom of religion, belief and opinion. There's no doubt and even the directive refers to it. So that's the first hurdle employers now have to face should they be challenged on it um, based on a discrimination claim. Um, the second issue is that there's a whole lot of hoops you have to jump through in terms of directive um, before you can get to the dismissal stage and before you can force an employee to, to um, get a vaccine. So you have to comply with all those directives and not fall, fall foul of that. And third, you are dealing, dealing with the Labor, Labor Relations Act, which also has, have, have um, procedural and substantive requirements, um, which you need to comply with for any type of dismissal. And this, we assume, will be a type of an incapacity dismissal where, where it said that because you do not have the vaccine, you are medically not able to work. Um, and, and those have got its own complexities. So it, it creates massive burdens for the employer, which he will have to prove that his conduct was fair and lawful. Um, it's, it's untested territory, and we believe it's, it's dangerous for employers to go down this path from a legal perspective. So you have to wonder why Adrian Gore's done that. Is it not perhaps because they're in the medical field, they've seen the difference between unvaccinated and vaccinated. We've seen uh, a, a graphic that is circulating on social media from Krotus Gear Hospital, where not one of the people who are in uh, ICU have been vaccinated. Uh, sorry, have not been. The vaccinated people are not there in, in ICUs. The unvaccinated are 100%. Same with people on ventilators. And it's a tiny percentage of those who are hospitalized who are amongst those who've been vaccinated. So it's almost like the, the evidence is so overwhelming that perhaps a company that's very close to the medical field will say there isn't really much of an argument against it. But you're saying legally there's an argument on the one side. Perhaps, Gerard, morally, is there an argument against mandatory vaccines as well? Now that is that is the issue, uh, Alec. I, I think they are, uh, you know, they they might for some people they might might be a religious uh, objection, and I must respect that. Uh, I don't necessarily have that. If, in my case, it's uh, there's a a uh, might be a, a matter of my opinion on the issue, uh, and not now, but maybe on the long run. Because I read, but this is an opinion. Um, I cannot be too, uh, too radical on the issue because I don't know, but I have the right to be concerned. And I'm talking about millions of people. And I say we have to respect that. Uh, you know, we can't get into other people's heads and tell them what they must do. They have a particular view and we must respect that view. And the, the point is, um, the, the world is, is divided on the issue. Uh, they are protesting in the streets of Paris and, and Rome and in Australia. This, this is an issue. And, 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 and what Discovery doesn't know is what it will turn out, what will happen eventually, and what will happen if there will be people that will refuse. And when they come out and they say, we're not going to do it, somebody, some other people will join their ranks and then they will get into legal battles. That is, that is, that path is not clear as yet. Um, so yes, it is a moral issue, but it is above all an issue of freedom of choice. Um, we are, you know, we didn't think that uh, two years ago, and uh, eighteen months ago, we would have been confronted with this. Um, uh, and, and I mean, when, when, when the president said a year ago, nobody, or less than a year ago, nobody will be forced to do that. He said that, uh, having in mind the issues with which uh, individuals will be confronted with. Well, the, the narrative has changed entirely, but the view of an individuals hasn't changed. And here's another thing. Uh, you know, the 
I mean, your, your um, platform allows for open discussion on this issue. And I think it, you're almost the only one that allows for that. And the moment you, you uh, suppress a debate uh, on an issue, that in itself creates uncertainty. And I think the, the worst way that government could have handled it, and it's not only our government, is to suppress open debate on the issues. And you have open debate on issues when you have the op two opposite sides in one room. It's not of much help if uh, to have them on separate, separate occasions. You must have them together in one room for people to make the decision. And the suppressing of one side is one of the reasons why people are extremely uncertain. The withholding of certain information. Certain things are just simply not uh, reported. And uh, that makes people um, very, very, very nervous. And we know that the goalpost has been shifted. I mean, you know, at, at some point, uh, you know, that one, one, one injection, now it's more. Uh, um, at some stage, it was a, a total solution. It's no longer that. There is the goalpost has shifted, and this is if people simply falls in. Now, those that is uncertain have a right to be uncertain. And we, as an employer organization, had to come out and say we take a particular position. Uh, we, must, we must give direction to our uh, lawyers in the field. They must deal with it. They must advise. So this is one reason why we've done it. So we come out and say this is our position. And, 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 and fundamentally, and sorry, I repeat myself, it's not whether it's a good or bad thing. It's about... The, the freedom of decision, of choice. Jaco, just to end off with, if you were to have supported mandatory vaccinations, in other words, if NIASA came and told all its members, uh, we support that because of the, the national interest, because of hospitalization, because of the evidence that everyone should be vaccinated. And then it's not unknown of, it's rare, but still a number of people, thousands of people around the world have died after taking vaccinations. There's a very famous case at the moment of a BBC reporter uh, in, in Newcastle in, in England who died as a direct consequence of blood clots due to the AstraZeneca vaccine. But let's just say you had told your employers to do that and one of their staff who was forced to take a vaccine died. What are the legal implications for the employer of that kind of a decision? Well, it's a difficult question to answer. It, it's uncharted territory. So the question would be, would you be able to, to claim that as an injury on duty? Possibly. It's not catered for at the moment. Um, and possibly there might be civil claims against an employer stating that you forced me to do this. You, 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 you had an option not to do it, but you forced me and you caused my death. So there might be massive civil claims against such an employer. Um, speculation at this stage, but it, it's it, it's a definite possibility um, that such did that could arise. Did that pay, play any part in your decision, or was it all to do, Gerard, as you said earlier, on freedom of choice? Well, it it did play uh, did, uh, play part in, in 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 the article we wrote. Uh, um, the um, uh, when at the front page of our uh, article we. Uh, we said uh, that uh, make the statement that uh, government has created the situation, but employers will be left holding the baby. Uh, we we took that out that particular sentence, but that is indeed our position. So we need upfront to tell employers, listen, this is our view. Um, this is our view. We we couldn't remain silent. Uh, we have to come out. I mean, but you know, apart from the legal uh, exposure. There's also a moral issue, you know, what if you force a, an employee into uh, in this situation, you know, an employer wrote to me uh, one or two weeks ago, and he said, uh, uh, you know, all his employees, not all his employees, many of his employees have been vaccinated, and then uh, he mentioned one of his uh, employees lying in hospital paralyzed for weeks, four weeks now. Now, you know... <laughs> You know, if that was a decision of an employee, well, that's fine. But what if you force that employee, that mother, into doing this? Well, that that's uh, that gives an entirely different color to this issue. So that is a moral issue, and uh, so that 
our way of dealing with this is make allow the employee to make that decision and those that ref that decide not to accommodate do and i believe that employers can do that there will be a way